Blah. With the blur. With the blur. With, with the blur and the blur. Did you have a, uh, a blur moment? A mouth blur. All right, guys, welcome back to Revamp and welcome back to the third part of our plumbing special. Now, it has been a bit of a break on these plumbing videos. We have been concentrating on trying to get the VX Commodore back on the road with all its new suspension. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link up here in the corner, but we've got a little break on that at the moment, just waiting for the diff to get checked out for us. So we're gonna try and finish up the plumbing on the one tonner. So, so far we've done the radiator, we've done the fuel system. So in this one, there's a lot of lines to just look at. Uh, shouldn't be a long video, I've just got power steering lines, trans cool lines to have a look at, and things like brake booster, and we may look at the breather tanks if we've got time towards the end. So let's get into the video and bring you guys along on part three of the plumbing special on the one tonner. So continuing on with our plumbing, I'm gonna move up to the power steering here. You can see down here, we've got a couple of AN fittings down here on the power steering, just here. And then we've got a couple here on the power steering cooler. So we've got that attached next to the radiator. We've taken out a little area on the side of the radiator just uh, to get a little airflow over that cooler. So what I've got to do is make up a high pressure line to the steering rack head. Then I've got to make a low pressure line that runs from the rack head to the trans cooler. And then from the trans cooler, it goes back to the reservoir of the power steering. I'm going to mount the lines for the power steering. You can see we've got the Astra pump here at the back next to the battery, which goes here. So we've got dash six lines. We've got high pressure Teflon, dash six braid for obviously the feed for the rack. And then we're just using the dash six rubber for the return from the power steering cooler. So I'm just gonna mount them with a simple P clamp to the side here and run them right along. Okay, you got those lines nicely cushion clamped up. I've got the power steering lines running out from underneath the corner of the cab here. We've got them in a heat sleeve, partly because it's going to run around the inner guard close to this, not, well, not close, but close enough to this exhaust here. Then it's going to run around the inside of the inner guard and then over, then over into the engine bay. So, partly for heat, also, because it's gonna be on the outside of the inner guard, we wanna give it a little bit of protection from, yeah, you know, things like stones and that kind of stuff. Make sure it doesn't get damaged. Well, we've got the inner guard on and the driver's side guard on, as you can see. And we've got our power steering lines running around the inner guard here. As you can see, that's the primary for the extractors. So we did have to clearance a bit here for the primary. And we've also gone ahead and clearance down here where this purple tape is to allow the hoses to come through from the other side there. So they'll run up like that. What we're trying to do, we're trying to utilize as many of the original holes in the inner guard as possible. So we've got some nice little stainless button head uh, bolts that go through from the other side. They just give it a nice clean look over there. And obviously over here, we're gonna have to put one or two extra holes and extra clamps over here. So that's gonna get those lines out of the engine bay for a cleaner look. It's going to keep them away from the exhaust. We've got the heat shield on them for obviously heat 
and it's heavy duty enough for any small stones or anything like that. So that's almost got those power steering hoses routed. Next, we've just got to check the length where it goes onto the cooler and the steering rack. Here's what we've got going on the other side. We'll put a little clamp in here somewhere to hold it against the chassis. And you can see the lines going to the cooler there. And we've got the lines going down, down here to the rack. Now I would have liked these lines to be a little more even. Um, just the loops are a little bit funny, but because the rod shop rack didn't come with the actual fittings that went in the rack down there in the rack head, uh, the instructions showed banjo fittings and we couldn't actually get the banjo fittings. So we had to go with the uh, just whatever angle AN fittings we can get. So, yeah, like I say, I would have liked the lines to be a little bit neater than that around the rack, but you know, it's probably about as good as we can do. You can also see there we've got the button head screws and you can see the cutout there that we did around the exhaust for the inner guard. We'll have to do that on the other side as well, but there's no hoses or anything running around the other side, so it's not really something that we're doing straight away. We just needed to get this inner guard on so we could sort out the rest of these plumbing lines. The other thing that we've done, and you may have seen it in some other videos, we just haven't really covered it yet, is the lines coming off the carbies here. They run to a T-piece underneath here, and that's for our brake booster. As you can see, this car does run a vacuum booster still, and you can see we have the line running through here across the bottom of the blower. So it's a pretty basic setup, just a dash six A in line, which is fine for vacuum. And you can see we've got the vacuum line for the brake booster running from both carbies. That's partly for a bit of a symmetrical look, but partly just to make sure that we don't have any balance issue with our carbies. You know, it shouldn't cause an issue, but you know, we want to make sure that both carbies stay as balanced as they possibly can be. So that's just another little part of the plumbing that I'd show you that we've sort of just sort of covered and not really, you know, talked about much. So the other thing we're looking to show you here is our trans cooler lines. Now, obviously it's a bit hard to see there, but we have our Teflon braided lines coming out well, in and out of the gearbox there at the trans cooler connectors. And if you come along, you can see we've got this fitting here, which is just a bit of a, like um, a block style fitting. Oh, it might be a bit hard to see up there, but that's our, that little brass fitting up there is our transmission oil temperature sender. Now, we've got that in the return line from the cooler, so the line going back to the gearbox, so that we get an indication of the oil temperature after it's cooled, make sure the cooler is working. But also, so we don't get huge temperature spikes um, from the oil before it's cooled. So it gives us a better all-round temperature uh, reading for the oil. So that's why we've gone with it in the return line for the trans cooler. So the lines continue along. The rubber line is our breather, which goes to one of our breather tanks at the back of the car. Um, obviously, no one wants to be that guy putting transmission oil down the track or 
even on the street for that matter, you know, spraying on the exhaust or something silly like that. So what we've gone and done, one of our breather tanks at the back is for the transmission and that can breathe and drain back into the transmission as it pleases. Then moving up the back, we've got the trans core, which is mounted to the frame that we built across the chassis for the battery and the Astra power steering pump. So I think from memory, it's a, uh, I think it's an Aeroflow item, more than likely from RCE. And you can see it runs a temperature switch on it. So you can run the fan controlled off the temperature switch. So it's not on all the time. We've mounted it on a bit of an angle here on the frame just to try and keep some airflow around it. Yeah, like even if you have a fan, if you have it mounted like fully horizontally to the underside of a trail, something like that, it doesn't give a lot of air for it to um, really breathe, so to speak, even with a fan. So that's why we've gone with the angled mounting. And obviously the fan's going to help that out as well. That's a quick look at the cooling for the transmission. Pretty simple mounting system. You know, just mounting it on that angle. Lines are pretty simple. And, you know, we've got that sensor in there for the trans temperature. So that should have us covered nicely for the transmission. All right, guys, hope you've been enjoying the plumbing specials we've had going on. We're just about to the end of the main parts of all the plumbing. Uh, this one's been mostly about a lot of lines that we've done. Uh, one thing we were going to put in a different video, but we're going to put it into this one uh, just to wrap up these plumbing specials, uh, is these breather tanks at the back of the cab. I've mentioned them a couple of times, haven't really gone into a lot of detail about them. They're there for the fuel tank, the diff, and the transmission. So obviously we've got breather tanks for the engine as well, but we'll probably do a separate video on those uh, once we finalise the design and the front of the car is back together and we can fit it all up properly. But these ones here, they're a little bit different to what you normally see on cars. You know, um, most people just stick with you know, a piece of tube or something like that. Uh, and they work similar in a way to, uh, I suppose, a radiator overflow, where you have a hose coming from an item, can build up fluid and then suck it back to that, that um, component again. So what I'll do, these are just on here loosely at the moment. I'll unscrew one and, or maybe both of them, and I'll show you what's going on and just give you a better idea of what we've got going on with these breather tanks. So let's get one off and have a look. While I'm just taking these off, I'll get you guys up to date with some of the footage of when we're making these and a little bit of what's underneath the car to do with them, that kind of thing. So. Have a look at that and I'll catch back up with you in a second. Well, look at this. I get in here and Jimmy's got a bit of a surprise for me. He's got uh, the basis of one of our breather tanks. Thanks to Graham who's put it together for us. Absolutely perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Yep. It's the right size. It actually fits in there nice so we can basically move it you know, we can sort of put it where we want. There's going to be one exactly the same on the opposite side. Uh, but yeah, it fits in there really well. We've got uh, these breather tanks. They're not quite finished yet. The mounting on the top here has to be filled in to give it some strength. We put some nut certs in the top. Jimmy's made up some little templates that we're going to use inside the car to work out where the holes are gonna go. So we're gonna try and get the position of the tanks and then 
we're going to move the templates inside, drill the holes, and with fingers crossed and great skill and determination, the holes are going to line up perfectly. So we'll get into that and see how we go. I've got a couple of pilot holes under here. We can take the template inside now, line up the rest of the holes and drill our main holes from the inside. All right, so our pilot holes lined up nicely with our template. Now I'm just gonna mark the other two holes and do a pilot hole in those. And then we should be able to size it up for the bolts we're gonna use. So it seems uh, Jimmy's going to try and uh, video if I've made a mistake again. <laughs> we'll see. Well, that's one. Oh, is that two? It's a promising start. Well, there you go. Five out of five. Okay, so he did a pretty good job of getting him in. Nice and even. Yeah. There's the back of the car. So that's in the right spot. Obviously they're gonna get powder coated uh, black. I'll probably do them gloss black, match the tray, uh, match the cabin. So how this is actually gonna work is there's actually three breather tanks here. This one is breather and overflow for the fuel tank. I can see it doesn't have the divide in the middle. This one here actually has a divide in the middle and we've got diff breather and trans breather. Now diff breather I've quite often had a problem with nine inches where the rattle hat breathers will blow oil all over the underside of the car particularly highway speeds etc. Now we had that problem with the v VX Commodore and it, um, yeah, we put a breather tank on that and it's fixed the problem. Transmission, if you've ever been to the racetrack and seen someone, you know, down the racetrack and they've had a wisps of oil coming out, a lot of the time you can find that it is the trans breathing oil onto the extractors. Now, we've put the tank on, this tank will actually not only breathe for the transmission, but the fitting on the bottom won't have a valve or anything in it. It'll just be open and it will actually drain the oil back to the transmission if it blows any out. So the fuel, because we're in a one tonner and we've got a drop tank in there, doesn't give you a lot of room above the tank to breathe. Uh, so when you fill the tank up, very difficult to stop the overflow from overflowing fuel. Now a lot of people will say yes put a rollover valve, I do a loop of hose, all that kind of stuff, tried all that kind of stuff on one tonnes before, failed. All I've been able to have success with, particularly with a car that will have no headboard like this, it will basically be here, the tray. We do an expansion or breather tank now this will sort of work like a sort of like a radiator overflow tank. The excess pressure and fuel will come in the bottom. It'll have a breather in the top. And as the fuel tank cools down, it will actually suck that fuel back into the tank. You know, obviously like your pressurized cooling system does. So that's how we're gonna try and get around the uh, low tray with the drop tank up high enough. And you can see it is quite high to the chassis. So if we want a nice low tray, we need somewhere for this pressure to go. And that's what we're going to do with these. Now there's some braided lines to connect up and some small breather filters that we'll put on here. Now the Commodore has just cotton fuel filters as breathers for both the 
surge tank, or not surge tank, sorry, the fuel cell, and for the diff. And on a hot day, we can walk past that car and not smell fuel at all. So I know they work, they're very simple. That's what's gonna have on all these, and all our fittings are on the back. So that's our breather systems for the car. And that's just about the plumbing finished. Underneath, it's a fairly simple setup. We just have some plastic fuel filters with some line going to the top of each tank. The filters just filter the air that travels backwards and forwards through the tanks as things heat up and cool down. So that's the transmission and the diff on that side. And we've got one over here for the fuel. Uh, the fuel, we have an extra loop in the final line coming to this filter, just to give that extra protection against any fuel splashing out. But realistically, the size of the tank, it should never really splash out. I hope everyone can actually see there what's going on. Uh, it might be a little bit difficult, but I'll show you as best as I can. So this is what we have going on at the back here. This is the fuel one. And it runs from the breather line of the fuel tank to this line here. And it's pretty simple. It's just a open box inside. Uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't end up putting any baffles in it. And what it's got is a fitting on the bottom and a fitting on the top. So the fitting on the bottom, this one is the fuel one, runs from the breather fitting on the tank, through the hose, over to this tank here. It's basically like an expansion tank. It can fill up with fuel in the bottom and suck back out as the tank cools down again. Then we've got the hose at the top, which goes into the obligatory uh, circular wrap or coil wrap. And that goes down underneath. And you would have seen in that bit of footage that we had some fuel filters mounted under the car just to filter any stray vapor and also dirt coming back in the other way. It's very similar concept here on the oils, you can just see we have a split in the middle of the tank. It's actually two tanks. And we have on the bottom, one comes around from the diff housing itself. And it works in a similar way. It's probably not going to suck any oil out, but it's got the same kind of venting tube here as well. Then we have something similar down the bottom for the trans breather as well. So they both work in the same way as the fuel, just that it's split in two. Yeah, the main reasons for doing this is that in a one tonner, you have a low tray. Uh, there's not a lot of room for fuel tank expansion when you're running these uh, drop tanks and you want to run them nice and high. So, We've got some expansion volume there. And look, you know, I think I said it before, no one wants to be that person at the track that spews oil all over the track. So that's why we've got these capture tanks for the diff and the transmission. So I hope that's answered any questions you might have about these breather tanks at the back. Uh, they're not something that you see on every car but I think there's something that works really well. We actually have a small one on the diff and the fuel tank in the VX Commodore as well, and they work perfectly. So that's why we've done such a comprehensive system on the one tonner. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed getting up to date with the plumbing on the one tonner. There's still those breather cans to do for the engine but like i said we're going to do those when we put the whole front end of the car together 
I uh, hope you understand what's going on with these breather tanks for the transmission and a fuel tank and diff, etc. Uh, it's not something that's done regularly. Uh, I know a lot of race cars and stuff do have those kind of things, um, but not something you see in a street car. I hope you understand the reasons why we've done it. If you want to know any more specific details about particular items that we've used or anything like that, let us know in the comments and we might do a just a general run through of the plumbing and the individual parts that we've used and not so much about how we fitted them. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching these plumbing specials and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with this or any of our other projects and I'll catch you up next time on revamp.